our feet. Let's read the word of the Lord, the fourth chapter of Zechariah. Hallelujah. My God, this is the year of innovation, y'all. Somebody say innovate. Innovation. The fourth chapter of Zechariah at the 10th verse, when you have it, just say amen, so I know we're there. And it says, for who have despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plumlet in the land of Zerubbabel. With these seven, they are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. Now let's read that together. One, two, three. For who have despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and see the plummet in the hand of Jerubbabel, which these seven, they are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. Father, we bless you and we glorify you. And we thank you for what you shall say in Jesus' name. Amen. Tell your neighbor before you sit down on both sides, little things do matter. All right, tell somebody else, little things do matter. Little things. Hallelujah. You may have a seat. Somebody shout, little things do matter. You know, uh, if, if you understand, uh, amen, the importance of the small, you would have a great appreciation. Amen, because everything in life has to grow. Are you with me? Amen, even when it comes to you, before you get to be who you are today in your physical body, you once was smaller than a peanut. Are you with me? I remember seeing um, one of the ultrasounds uh, when I had kids, and amen, and they showed us the little ultrasound, and we, all they showed us was a, uh, uh, they said, they're going to baby. And I said, where's it at? They said, that little thing. I said, where at? It looked like a peanut. And I looked at that little peanut, and I said, that is my baby right there, that little peanut. And my God, are you with me? But, but how many know time will cause things to grow? Amen. Time will cause things to grow. Are you with me? If it's nurtured right. Are you with me? And uh, even each and every one of us, we have to grow. Are you with me? And, and how many know that you have to make sure you're growing? And how many know you got to do what it takes to grow? It's one thing about the preacher preaching. Are you with me? And the preacher teaching. The Bible says after all that's been preached and taught and everything, you're going to have to study to show yourself approved before God. Well, a whole lot of folks I realize mess up is they won't to preach, they want to hear the word, they can hear tapes and all that tapes and stuff is real good. But until you sit down and crack that word open and say, God, give me some food myself, it makes a difference. And I'm going to tell you where it makes a difference. It makes a difference with your relationship with God. You can hear the preach word, talk word, and get inspired. Inspiration, yeah, ha, oh, God, oh, oh, didn't he preach? Ha, ha, didn't you tell it? Hey, oh, oh Phil, oh, ha, ha, whoo. But when the deal go down, you're going to have to be able to articulate that word yourself. And the only way you can really articulate, amen, is by studying the word of God to show yourself approved. In other words, I didn't hear it. I even know where it is in the Bible. I know where to find this because when it gets tough and hard, thank God for what I felt on last week. Thank God for that broke it down in Bible study. But, 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 but did I record it so I could meditate to get it in my spirit so it can make a change in my life? See, God doesn't don't want to just pat you up and doctor you up. God wants to do a transforming work on the inside. And for him to do it is you got to get that word, read that word, Meditate on the Word. You know what the Word of God says? The Word of God says that bodily exercise profiteth little. Are you hearing me? Now, you can run all day. Hey, you, you may look good on the outside, but what about on the inside? This, like this bodily exercise, there is spiritual exercise to cause yourself to be stronger. 
And what is the spiritual exercise? It is getting the word and meditating on that word. You know, like when you're exercising, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh, 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 You know, really know what I'm talking about. And then you get, you know, who, man, who? You get up, oh. but, 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 but check it out. It's the same principle with the Word of God. You got to get that Word of God and you got to meditate on that Word of God. You keep chewing it. My God, you keep, my God, swallowing it. And, and my God, like a cow, my God, he, he, he begins to bring it back up and chew it again. It, it's a process of meditating on that Word until that Word gets down on the inside. See, God is not calling the church to be a superficial church. I got a form of knowledge. I got a form of knowledge. But you deny the power of it because you're not letting that that you get on the outside fall deep on the inside. I'm telling you, it makes a difference. We're living in a society right now that, look, folks like, my God, hey, hey, I don't even have to bring my Bible. It's on the screen. Hallelujah. Hey, there it is. You know, I, I, and I'm not saying if you don't bring your Bible, but I'm saying it's good to have that Bible so you can underline some things. Take that marker and mark it and read it and take it home and get what the preacher have taught and say, let me get this in my spirit. And when you get it in your spirit, it transforms you. In the day and age that we live in, it's a get and go day. But when it comes to the word of God, you're going to have to stand fast and say, God, put this on the inside. Meditate, chew it up, get it on the inside until it becomes a part of you. Are you hearing me? Because when you get it on the inside, it changes you. To be transformed, the Bible says, by the renewing of your what? It is the word of God. I'm, I'm word conscious and not man conscious, not society conscious, not feeling conscious, but, but word conscious. And so I, it's an attack throughout the whole world against the churches that, that people are not studying like they need to study. They're not meditating like they need to meditate. This say my message, but I'm going here for a purpose. Like, Holy Ghost, no. But, 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 but God is saying, you got to get it on the inside. Are you with me? My God, when I anoint, my God, when I lay my hands, I'm, it's a re-reflect. It's a, it's a, I'm responding to what's happening on the inside. I'm not just doing it because I know I can, but I, I need the heart feeling of the Spirit of God and the Word of God mixed together in me that when I do it, it's coming out with power and authority. You better hear the preacher today. You better hear the preacher today. Hallelujah. I, I, oh, I see, I see. And, 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 and as babes in Christ, new believers, look at here, train yourself. To meditate on the Word of God. Well, 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 well Reverend Suki, bro, Brother Hookie, they don't ever seem like they're doing it. Don't be like Brother Suki, Brother Hookie. You get the Word of God yourself. Because everybody that calls themselves, I'm apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, it don't mean, my God, that they get the goods. How are you hearing me? But, but God wants to manifest the goods out of a life that has really taken that Word and let the Word begin to transform them into who God wants them to be. Are you hearing me? But it starts off with little things. I always give people that come into the Lord, get saved, I always give them this assignment. A young man, thank God he just came to me uh, 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 this the other day. Amen, Sister Ward's grandson. And he came to me and he said, Apostle. He said, Apostle. He said, you know, I feel God dealing with me. I need, I, I, you know, what do I do? What do I do? I said, okay, man of God. I said, you serious about this? And he said, yeah. I said, this is what I want you to do. I said, read the gospel. I said, read the Gospels the first time. Read my, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Just read them. Just, just go through it. Don't worry about stopping. But just read it. I said, the second time you read it, read it with a pencil and underlining some things that stand up in your, that just stick, speaks to your heart. And I said, just underline these things that seem to be, ooh, I want it. And I said, in the next time, the third time you read it, I said, you read it, amen, asking questions. And I said, and I guarantee you, after the third time reading it, you will not be the same. It is something about reading that word and getting that word on the inside that changes you. Emotion will not change you. 
Uh, emotion is something, boom, and then it's gone. But it's the word that has to be rooted and planted in you. And in this generation, we got to get it on the inside. You got to stop saying, well, what Brother Suki said, and I like what they said. No, no, no. It's about what God wants to say through you out of the word of God. Power is getting that word on the inside of you. Say amen to the preacher. Amen. I, mean, I, I, I know some of y'all like this, but, but I, I just don't feel like it. I go to sleep when I, uh, when I read the word of God. Well, you better rebuke that old sleep devil until it get out of my face. I'm going to read the word of God. If I got to read it, my God, and put it in my phone and let it read to me, I'm going to read it. I'm going to meditate it. I'm going to stop it, rewind it, get it here again until I get it in me. You got to do something to help pump up your spirit. You got to, it ain't just going to happen. My, it, I just want it to fall on me. It ain't going to fall on you. You got to do something. You can't be lazy saints. You got to be saints that are hungry for the word of God. And don't you get so deep and so mature that you stop reading your Bible because you think that you know enough. You're foolish. Every time I read the Bible, I get a fresh revelation. I get a fresh understanding. I'm here to let you know, get in the word. Are you hearing me? Everything starts off small, but how are you going to grow it? Small things make a good impact. Good habits will cause you to be blessed. Bad habits will mess you up. Good habits, reading the word of God, will cause you to grow. And it causes you to be strong. You got to develop a habit. Just like we went on a 21-day consecration fast. Some of you came off, and when you ended that fast, you didn't feel like that apple pie. You didn't feel like that big old steak. And some of you got mad because you said, what I'm going to do when I get out of I did it fast. I'm going to tear it up. But after the fast, you didn't even feel that way. Why? Because you program your Bible. You train your Bible. At 21 days uh, is where habits are made. And you train yourself good habits uh, to do better about yourself. Are you with me? And you got you to train yourself. You got to discipline yourself to say, hey, I am a man of God. I am a woman of God. I am the body of people of God. I, 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 you got to get it right. Are you hearing me? The winds are blowing. Winds are blowing. The winds of the enemy that are blowing, that they're blowing. And, and I'm here to let you know, you better make sure you get a foundation on you. I'm here to let you mess that's going on all over the world. My God, with diseases, uh, with, I, I, with, with all kind of terrorist ads. Uh, and here you are, you want to play around. Ain't no time to play around. It's a time to say, God, God, uh, Lord, show me. Give me what I should do. Uh, Lord, give, reveal a word. Open up my spirit. Give me understanding like never before. It's not a play day get yourself together get in the word of God quit playing around my God quit letting it, I, I, but, but uh, Susie pray for me pray for yourself I tell him, won't Susie to pray for you my God well, do you, you got a relationship with Susie what about a relationship with the Lord he want to talk about it talk to you but look, at, I look here but everything that starts small but if you do it right, you'll grow better. Have you ever understood? Well, God had the potter. They give the example of the, the potter in the clay, the man on the potter. And God said, make it. And God was making, used the potter man to make that clay. It was spinning on a wheel, and he was just peeling off stuff that didn't need to be there. And the stuff that it was good and smooth, he kept it there. And then after he had made it, he looked at it, and he said, who? Look at it. And God looked at it and said it's good, but it ain't good enough. Make it again. Some of us, we think that we've been made perfect the first time. And God said, I got to make you again. I, I need a makeover in your life. You need a makeover. I'm going to give you some spiritual makeup. I'm going to give you a spiritual manicure. I'm going to give you a, I, I, I got to do you again. You're not what you think you are. That old glory that you had, it don't wore off. But God said, I got to do a new thing in you. I got to give you a better quality make job over to make you beautiful for my glory. Tell, tell somebody make me again, God. You, you gotta be made again. 
Well, I'm good enough. I'm a good enough. That's where you're messing up at. Because as long as you live, God going to take you, break you down, and try to build you back up. He going to take you. A, a, in my life, all of my life, my God, I'm thinking I'm feeling good. And what does God do? Break me down again. He said, you're good here, but what about this? But, oh, God, then he has to build up, woke up another area in my life, thank God. But he don't, he don't deal in every area at the same time. Are you hearing me? I heard this on a TV yesterday. I was watching TV. And y'all probably know this, this guy that sell this exercise work job. What's his name? No one here. Who? Sean T. Yeah. And, they, they were, and Sean T was saying, how I get people strong is I teach them how to work on different muscles at one time. He said, I don't work on them all at the same time, or else it would be a big problem. They wouldn't want to do it. So he works on some muscles first. He keeps those muscles, and he, when he gets those muscles down, he said, now the next day, we're going to work on this side. Are you hearing me? In other words, what he was saying, he, he was saying that I'm not going to put more on you than you're able to bear. Are you hearing me? And, and sometimes God got to take us through that process of making it strong. And when he makes it strong, don't get so big-headed. I have arrived yeah, yeah, right here, but let's look on the other side. The other side is still weak and needs some help. And then God said, now let me work on this side. And then, you know, then see, God has to work on us. But it takes steps. I I'm talking to you. I know your flesh is saying, I don't, I don't want to do nothing. I just, I just want to open my mouth and just take no, it don't work that way. You're going to have to fight. You're going to have to work hard. My God, I, you, you, you might have asked that little lady, how you lose out of work? She said, I had to exercise. I had to do it. Then you get mad at it. You know, no, no, don't get mad because you know what you're going to have to do to lose all that weight too. You're going to have to work. You're going to have to exercise. Uh, it, 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 this ain't going to happen. Uh, you got to start from somewhere. Where, where, where can't you at? Where Pastor can't you Somebody says it's got to start somewhere. No, no, no. Let, let me... Let me show you something, and I, and I like this, and, and, and it's in the book of, well, it ain't in the book. Let me get you this reading. I like, this is words from John Wooden. This is what John Wooden, great basketball coach, used to coach at South Bend, St. Joe back in the day. And he coached for UCLA, amen, for, for, for years, a big name. And he said this thing. He said, it's the little details that are vital. Little things make big things happen. It's the little things that we ignore that is very valuable for us. Are you hearing me? Now, Brother Kenze, why are you bringing the letter out? What's just going on here? What's going on here? He acting, he disturbing my message. That's right. Brother, we don't need a paint job right now, brother. No, I'm making an example. This is where we all are. And we got to watch out. When we start, we all have to start from the bottom. I know you want to start from up here. Now, don't climb up. Don't get too fast. See, that's what happened. You want to go run on up the stairs. Uh, but you got to follow instructions. Are you hearing me? You don't want to listen to the instructions. You get big. I know. I know what to do. I, no, you don't know what to do. You're going to get messed up. Because the anxiety will mess you up. You cannot let your emotions run you crazy. Your emotions say, do that, do that, do that. Shut up. You got to get basics down. If you don't conquer the basics and you don't conquer the little things, you're not going to do good on the higher things. So here's Kente going up one step at a time. How many know you only can take one step at a time? When you was a baby, when you started walking, you didn't take four steps at a time. You took one. Somebody say one. Somebody say one. One step at a time. So... One more step, Pastor Kente. He done took another step. Ain't that good? Now, since he took two steps, he feel confident. I got this. You know what happens when you get overconfident? You stop trusting in the Lord. You say, I can do this. Nobody can tell. I got this. Now, be quiet. I, I know what to do. You better keep your eyes on the Lord. 
You got to keep seeking the Lord. It ain't a thing that God, I tap in, and when I come out, and if I need you, I'll come back. But I got this, God, no, I need you good, bad, and ugly. I need to walk with the Lord. I, I need, matter of fact, I need him to lead me and guide me. I don't want to lead the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost to lead me. What happens is anxiety will get you ahead of yourself. Instead of Kente taking one step at a time, get back on the second one. I didn't tell you to go over there. Did I? You, you ain't following instructions. Okay, now, when he gets so happy, instead of going to this step, he going to skip over and say, well, I can go way up here. Oh, okay. Wait, no. Insurance paid. Yo, administration. All right. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Key, key. But what happens is when you try to step too big, you can slip. And when you slip, you what? Go all the way back. Go on down to the bottom. How many know you got to take one step at a time? You, you got to go through the process of development. You got to go through the process. You can't do it your way. You got to do it God's way. So quit trying to make me an overnight success. I can turn everything over right No, 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 no. God knows why he has to take you the routes he has to take you. Oh, yeah. But every route that I have to take in life, I didn't like every route. I was like, what's wrong, God? Am I saved or not? Am I yours or not? God, this don't make no sense. And God said, this is why I'm trying to tell you, I want you to have my mind. I don't want you to have your mind, because your mind will make you frustrated. It will get you irritated. But if you get my mind, you'll have peace. I, I, I know what I'm doing. You don't like your small beginnings. But he said, despise not the day of small beginnings. Because he said, there is a pummelet. There is a measuring rod. There's a thing that God said, I know how far to let your lease go. I know how far, I, I know what to do, but, but I know you got plans. But God said, no, 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 no. I know what I'm doing. And God said, I already got it covered everywhere. My eyes are all over the earth. I already know what I'm going to do. And so ain't nothing going to get past me. I'm God. But if you trust me, I, 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 will, I will give you what you need at the time. Are you hearing me? Somebody said, take one step at a time. Despise not the, 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 the small steps. Ain't that easy? But ain't it funny when you get higher, it ain't all that easy all the time. Because God will raise you up to a higher altitude. And, but you have to depend on what you learned at your low levels. But if you skip your low levels, you're not going to know how to handle your high levels. But if you take every step, there is development on every step. You're going from glory to glory to glory. God didn't say you're going from glory to, to the end, but you're going from glory to glory. It's a process of development. And all your routes are ugly. You didn't like that, didn't you? I haven't met a saint, a man of God, that could tell me, that all my routes were just smoother. I was just cruising on a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday afternoon. I was cruising. It was just smelling. I didn't have to go through nothing. It was just, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm somebody. I'm, oh, it's, it's just cruising. Well, if you ain't had to go through nothing, it made me wonder whose kingdom are you on in? Uh, because if you are saying of the Lord, you, you are going to have to go through something. 
You can smile all you want, acting like, oh, I got it all together. Hey, I got it all together. I'm Queen Annie, man. Hey, I got. But the real deal is, uh, you're going through something uh, because in this world, you're going to have tribulation. Uh, you're going to have some problems. Uh, but be of good sure, God said, I'll overcome it for you. I'll work it out for you. But you got to trust me. And trust in your ability. You'll run yourself crazy. Hold on, kid. Have a seat. Have a seat. Our, our pet dog, Pancake, passed on the other week. And my wife took it so hard. My daughters were sad, but my wife, she really took it hard. I mean, I thought a real person died. I'm like, I mean, she was... She said, he is a real person. What are you talking about? That's panicking. <laughs> but she took it out, cracked it out tears. It hurt my heart. I said, man, that was really, I mean, that was, you know, something special. But the reason Pancake died is because he had autoimmunity. And what autoimmunity is, it is your system fighting itself. Are you hearing me? Well, your body should be fighting bacteria that will enter in your body to kill it and destroy it, but it's when the body turns on itself. And so Pancake, I went to the vet and she did the test and everything. She said, the kind of dog that you have, she said, this happens more with your dog than any other dog, but we just don't know why. Nobody has answers for it. But you know, that happens with the Cocker Spanders for some reason. And so, uh, so, Pancake, she showed me and told me, showed me how the warfare was going on. And she said, now this is Pancake's good cells that are fighting good blood and everything. And he said, now here's the bad over here. And the bad is trying to take over. But you can see where Pancake is making even more, amen, uh, uh, cells to try to fight back. But she said, but, but, it's, but, but as soon as it fights back, it fights against itself. It's hurting itself. It's not fighting the right thing. It's fighting itself. Are you hearing me? And so when I looked at that and I said, oh God, he's, his body is coming against itself. And I felt, oh my God, this is crazy. And God told me, he said, that's just like some of the believers. Some of the believers, some of our problems that we should be fighting, we're not fighting. But we'll fight the body instead of fighting demons and spirits. We'll destroy one another. We are, we'll talk about one another we are we have issues with one another and we don't see who's behind it it's the devil behind it it said i see the devil can't use nobody as good as he can use the saint i mean if it, the devil really want to tear the house he don't want to call folks on the outside he said let me use the inside let me get mary against harry let me get Susie against Beatsy. let me get dan against frank let me cause immunity disorder i don't the immunity disorder to happen in the church she's gonna be well the, the devil is skillful and he, he 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 knows his stuff don't you underestimate his devices that's why the Bible says, be not ignorant of his devices. Because the same thing he did last year, do it this year. Look here, he'll, he'll bring fear. Don't you know, no fear will tear you up, mess up your own body? It releases antibodies that say, kill. Why do you think, my God, when you're mad at folks, you get sick? You feel bad. I don't know, oh, I just feel so messed up. You don't realize you're releasing a chemical that's tearing your own body up. Are you with me? It's autoimmunity disorder. Well, well you're, you're hurting yourself and don't even realize it. Walking in fear, I can't make it, I can't make it. I'm scared, I'm scared. And that's why the dog attacks you. He smells it on you. He smells fear. He said, look, they're beating up themselves. I might as well help them. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you with me? They sense that. So you got to realize what's negative things. Don't live in the negative. You're called to live victorious in the positive. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. I, I don't care if stones are, are cast at 
you make the stones, stepping stones, and, and stand on it, but because you're going to go through something. Somebody say, hear the preacher. Don't hear yourself. Let me look here. I didn't get much time yet. Oh, I'll get two minutes. Turn with me real quick in another passage of Scripture in the book of... In the book of James, very familiar reading. Turn there in the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hallelujah. If you want to make it to the top of the ladder, you got to take small steps. If you want to make it up, take small steps. You can't be before yourself. You can't let pride come in you. Try to get you out ahead of your schedule. I'm my way over here. I'm no. I'm better. I'm greater. My God, nobody's like me. I'm who? It, oh, try to mess you up. Take small steps. Are you slip? Pride comes before what? You can take small steps. You want to go to the top? Take it so you can manage it right. Are you hearing me? Because if you can't manage where you are, you need to like, well, maybe I'm going, God help me. I need, I need help. You are a steward of yourself. You are a steward of what God has given you. And you got to handle it right. How, how, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Look what the word of God says. Somebody, small, somebody say small matters. Small things matter. I, I really had to do a series on this because I didn't even touch really what I want to do. But, it, but look what it says in the fifth verse of the third chapter. Y'all get it? Y'all get it? My God, and it talks about the tongue. He's talking about the tongue, how the tongue will mess you up. And it said, even so the tongue is a little member and boast of what? Great things. Behold how great a what? Matter, a little what? Your, 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 your tongue is a little member, but it can cause some big problems. You got to know how to handle your tongue. You just can't say what you want. Hello? You can't say what you want, what you're big and bad to say. It'll mess you up. Some folks, well, I, I, I don't care what I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to say. And they don't realize some people put curses on themselves for talking crazy. You just don't, you just don't talk about yourself. You are a believer. Life comes out of your mouth. You are a believer. Life comes out of your mouth. Are oh, you hearing me? That little tongue, little member. It could get you blessed. I could get you cursed. It's right there, the word of God in the reading. You gotta guard your tongue. You got how many know you gotta put your tongue in prison? You know what a prison is? It is shank. Keep him behind the bars of your teeth. Keep him on lockdown. Don't let him out. He go crazy. And when he's gonna speak, you better make speak sure he's speaking life. Because if you get around people that speak crazy, that poison, they get on you. Yeah. My God, they talk, they talk crazy so much now. Oh, my God, you'll be crazy. It'll yeah. mess you up your balance. You're going to realize, look, we speak life over here. We speak health over here. We speak victory over here. We speak we are more than a conqueror over here. That's why Joshua and Caleb, God loved them because they understood how to speak victorious things. When everybody was speaking, we can't do it. It's crazy. Forget Moses. I ain't said Moses. But Caleb and Joshua, they had another spirit. They were speaking life. We can take the mountain. We can do it. Yeah, yeah. We may be few, but we're mighty in God. I don't care if they look at us as grasshoppers. We may look small to them, but we know who our God is. Because when the deal go down, it ain't about you. It's about God. He is the worker. He is the deliverer. He is the one that opens doors. He's the one that gives favor. He's the one that slams doors on the enemy. It's about him. You better hear the preaching. But, 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 I, but I'm ready to be great. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready for the super duper number. So much greater. Listen to this quote by Dwight L. Moody. There are many of us that are willing to do great things for the Lord, but few of us are willing to do the little things. 
Everybody want to do the great things, but they can't do the little things. They ask them to sweep the flow. Ain't, hey, we going to go take the mountain. Yes! Little things, oh, that ain't big enough. Amen. Come on, come on. Work, 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 work with this auxiliary. Yes, I work with this. This ain't good enough. My God, hey, but we want to go take the, the mountain over here. Yeah! But they don't want to deal with the little things. See, if you never conquer the little things, if you never discipline yourself for the little things, you can't handle the big things. And if you handle them, it's only for a season. Are you hearing me? It's only for a season. You're developed by the little things. You're made by the little things. Pastor said, do this. Be obedient. I ain't going to do it. He's a man. He can't tell me what to do. Show. Sure. But I'm your father in the Lord. But I'm a, just like a natural father, you tell your kid to do something, they tell you no, and you look like, oh, for what? What? Huh? Oh, oh, come back here, you little whippersnapper. You get on here. My, are you hearing me? You got to follow the instructions. You got to follow detail. I can't even get on that. I ain't got time for that part of it. But there's so much for our elevation that we got to do. We're not just going to grow. If I grow, I don't want to grow weird. I want to grow sound. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? And one of the things you got to realize, don't let iniquity come in your heart. Because if iniquity come in, what iniquity is, the word iniquity means bent. In other words, if you don't have iniquity, you, you're straight. But when iniquity comes in, it bends you. Not only does it bend you, because remember, iniquities can go down from generation to generation. Not only will it bend you, it will bend your family, your grandsons, your grandma. Your, uh, uh, generation after generation, they'll be bent. And we're like, why do we have this bend? We thought it was normal. No, it get bent because you get out of alignment. You have to stay aligned. Or the devil will hit you, your family, with a generational curse because you bent out of shape. It could be a bent of rebellion. Are you hearing me? It, it could be a bent, my God, of my God, having babies out of what? Like it could be a bent, my God, of, out of all kind of negativity of fear. You got to straighten yourself up and not be bent because your life does matter. 